Hello and welcome. We're going to count down the top 10 arcade games from 1979. So first up, we'd like to mention a few runner-ups. We have two video pinball arcade games from Atari. The first one was called, coincidentally enough, Video Pinball. And as you can see, this was an attempt to have pinball action, but in a video arcade game. And the graphic capabilities at the time weren't able to display all the bells and whistles that a pinball table would bring. So what they did was they had a backdrop that was the main playing table of the pinball. And then they would overlay on top of that some video elements that actually moved, things like flippers and ball and drop targets. So it was a really cool effect. Uh, video pinball was followed up by Solar War, another variation, the same kind of game, but a different backdrop, so different playing field as well. What I thought was really great about this was the ball had realistic physics. It reacted like you would think. So this was well ahead of the time where we'll see way down the road realistic pinball physics on a video screen or on a computer screen. Two other runner-ups before we get to the top 10, both by Cinematronics, Starhawk in March and Tail Gunner in November. So these were two vector arcade games that had similar theme. You were shooting at things that were flying out, but it, with it being vector graphics, they were bright, they were well-defined. The scaling effect was really cool, made it a very 3D feeling when, when 3D was not at all a part of most arcade games. So I enjoyed both of these, and I thought they were worth mentioning, even if they didn't crack the top 10. So now let's delve into number 10, Atari Basketball in May. Atari had a few sports games, which all were brought out with the trackball to control the action as realistically as possible. But of the three, baseball, football, and basketball, I thought basketball was by far the most fun. Maybe because I like basketball, I'll admit, but it was also the sprites were bigger, the people looked like people. It's just a simpler game, you know, you could instantly get into it and, and play basketball, try and steal it, try and block, make shots. and. You know, I like the mechanics of this game. The trackball controlled your figure, and pressing and holding the button would adjust how hard you would shoot the basketball. And it was pretty competitive. You get to play against a computer-controlled opponent. So that, of course, I enjoyed. Number nine, Space Invaders Deluxe, or Space Invaders Part Two by Taito, September. So this was actual legitimate sequel from Taito to the original Space Invaders. They had some new features, splitting aliens, levels, a little interlude. So a lot of nice things here. It's only number nine because there were plenty of Space Invader-like games that came out, clones and variations and whatnot. So it was nice to see the official sequel, but it was also Space Invaders overloaded to some extent in 1979, but you know, still worthy as it was a pretty cool game. Number 8, Sheriff by Nintendo in October. Nothing outrageously great about Sheriff, but it was just plain fun. What I get from it is you're the Sheriff and there's a bunch of outlaws and you have to take them all out. You are in the center and the outlaws surround you and if you wait too long they start to come in to attack you. But you could shoot in eight directions and run around so it's almost like the Robotron controls where you have one to control and one to shoot. The long and short of it is it's pretty fun and uh, challenging and had a lot of cool effects. Even had a little cutscene where you have, uh, is that Princess Pauline? Princess Peach? I don't know, but uh, once again, the Nintendo storytelling comes out in a simple little game called Sheriff. Number seven, Radar Scope, also by Nintendo. So this game came out in Japan did pretty well in Japan apparently, didn't do very well in the States, but Radar Scope I thought was a cool game. 3D-ish playing field, dive bombing aliens, you can shoot a whole bunch of things, and what surprised me is they even had stats on the in-between rounds, and this didn't really become mainstream till later, like Galaga, where you saw, you know, shots fired and percentage attack, but kudos to Nintendo for a lot of really neat things here and making a fun game, especially for this vintage. Number six. Warrior by Vector Beam. Warrior is the one-on-one -on -one fighter of the day. So Vector Graphics again projected on a backdrop and the backdrop showed there were some pits and some stairs and you have to run around the playing field fighting an opponent. One joystick controlled the action, one controlled your sword play and although it is a little wonky as far as how it actually connect when you hit the other person, it had a lot of visual appeal. 
I remember watching this and kind of being scared by this, watching the, the, the little guys fall down the pit and hearing the loud crashes when they got cut down. But for the time, I thought Warrior was a pretty neat game. Number five, Lunar Lander by Atari. So Lunar Lander, you've heard of this, you probably know about this. You're trying to land your lunar module on the surface of the moon, but there were only a few choice spots to land. So balancing your thrust and your speed and velocity and trying to make that perfectly nice soft landing for the highest score. Yeah, this is a pretty neat physics-based game. And what they did, they took a concept of this Lunar Lander game that had been floating around for years and they turned it into more of an arcade experience with the cool control stick and uh, you felt like putting a quarter into this wasn't wasted. Number four. Head On by Gremlin Industries, April. So this game was the forefront of a whole bunch of games that are similar. You go around a maze, but instead of having complete control, you can only control your car at lane change time. So it presented a challenge for timing when to get to the lane to make your change ahead of the opponent. So the computer would control the other cars, and it starts out with just one, but eventually adds more cars to the mix, making it harder and harder. But I enjoyed this game a lot. Actually, I played the Atari 2600 version for years before I even knew there was an arcade version. Part of how you can tell Head On was a popular game was all of the spin-offs and sequels and follow-ups and things like that. But it was out there a lot in 1979. Great game. Number three. Monaco GP by Sega. It's funny because when my brother saw this in their arcade, he loved driving games. Even before he could really read terribly well, he called this Mungan Up because the GP was stylized and he thought it said up and he couldn't really pronounce Monaco, it was just Mungan. So we laugh and call this game Mungan Up. But as you can tell, this was a high-tech driving game from 1979, top-down 2D scroller. But you would go through ice, you would go through dark, you would uh, have to avoid cars. It was very much reaction-based, not like driving simulation, more just driving arcade. And it was really fun inspired a whole bunch of a string of games very similar over the years but this one was solid state so not as many people get to play it nowadays but if you do it's a uh, it's fun it's classic and uh, it deserves number three which brings us to the top two and you're probably thinking of the top two right now in your mind if you know anything about 1979 the trickiest one is which one to pick as number one and which one to pick as number two but i'm gonna go with number two as asteroids from atari Asteroids is one of the coolest games. I mean, take vector graphics at the peak of its usefulness. So you can draw sharp lines with small objects. The playing field was immense because of the resolution. You would never have gotten the resolution with a bitmapped raster type of graphic screen. It had to be this vector screen for drawing the little tiny triangular spacecraft and the little tiny s space saucers that come out and the asteroids that break up. But this game just had it all. It was a quarter muncher. I like to test the younger generation these days by sticking in front of asteroids and seeing how long they last. Kids, it's just a totally different kind of arcade game than they're used to. There's no platforms, you just physics and rolling around and you, it, it's fun to watch them just die really quickly and you're just laughing because you're so much better than the kids at something. But anyway, terrific game. And as you might have heard, Asteroids became Atari's number one selling arcade game of all time. With good reason. And the only thing that started to put a damper on its uh, quarter munching abilities was that people got so good at it and they found out tricks and then they could just they could just hunt. You know, you heard scores of 10 million, 12 million, 15 million, and it just kept going up from there. But Asteroids was a real trendsetter and a very popular, terrific game in 1979. Which leaves us at number one, which I picked as Galaxian by Namco. And the reason I picked Galaxian, it was my introduction to arcade games. When this came out, I was just a young boy and I actually got quarters from the Tooth Fairy to go to Sears and play the local Galaxian machine. My dad and I would go back and forth and for the longest time we were pretty neck and neck. So obviously this game goes way back for me for nostalgia purposes and as you look at it, I mean, compared to other 1979 games, this one had a lot of interest. It has the multicolored sprites, which was either the first or one of the first. 
It had the little opening ditty. It had awesome sound effects. Dive bombing aliens, very dynamic. And I think, you know, there's a certain challenge that I love about Galaxian having a single shot. It's not just slam the fire button and shoot as many things up as you can. This is more of a, a strategic shooter. And as you play it more, you actually really do get better at aiming your shots and timing your shots and planning just the right timing for your single shot approach to uh, shooters. So for me, Galaxian gets top spot for 1979 arcade games. And those are my top picks for 1979. In the comments, let me know if you agree, disagree, or what you might switch around. Love to hear from you too. And uh, look forward to more top 10 lists coming soon.